and other information so you can visually see those characteristics. This is really cool, right? So now you can kind of see if I, ch well, let's just leave it the way it is. Maybe you have to squint your eyes a bit. I don't um, can zero. You can see the longest flow path, right? Zero. Right there. You can see that for each of the sub basins. If I move this icon, mm. oops, I can't. let's go to. Mm. There we go. I'm moving the icon away. Here's the centroid of the sub basin, right there. There's the centroid of this sub basin as well. And then you can see the centroidal flow path, right? So if it's, it's a perpendicular bisector, so if you were looking straight, oh no where the centroid would fall on this stream length right there. Yep. So if, if you use that as part of the regression equation, you have okay. access to the centroidal flow path, so the flow path from the centroid to the outlet of the sub basin. There's also the slope as well. Okay. Um, what other characteristics? Okay. Okay. You can turn off and on those characteristics from the map layers window. Okay. I went a little faster. Let me back it up. If you go to the view menu, oh. map layers, you can turn on and off those sub basin characteristics right there. You can also, let's say you don't have that information yet, the way that you compute those is parameters, characteristics, and sub basins. The first time you select this, it should generate the table for you. Um, this table will only be generated, though, if you have terrain data in your project. If you have a project with no terrain data, it's not georeferenced, then this file will not be, or this information will not be computed for you. That's subbasing characteristics. Same thing for reach characteristics. So parameters, characteristics, reach. There's just one reach segment in this model. It's a very simple model, and you can see the, the information that the program computed right there. Okay? So that's the sub-basin characteristics. Let's talk about the parameter expression calculator. Right? So let's just assume. So I'm going to open up the transform. So under parameters, transform, mod Clark, we're going to learn more about this very soon about the transform methods. But you can see I already have the time of concentration estimated here. I'm going to delete it. There we go. And then I'm going to use the expression calculator to estimate the time of concentration. The first thing that you have to make sure of, I've, I fall into this trap all the time, you have to make sure you choose the field that you want to use the expression calculator to um, estimate values for, so time of concentration. I'm not going to use grids to estimate my time and concentration. Instead, I'm going to use characteristics, the subbasin characteristics. So I need to choose the stats tab there. The equation that we want to use, I can never remember the equation. So what I do is I fall back to published information. So let's find where that equation is at. It's going to be not here. It's going to be here. There we go. So again, this is a regression equation. Let me zoom in so everybody's on the same page. This is the regression equation. This equation was developed using subbasin characteristics and a calibrated model at multiple locations that defined what the time of concentration was. So somebody did the regression analysis that came up with this equation right here. So what it says is the time of concentration equals 2.2 times the longest flow path length divided by the slope of the 1085 length, square root of that, and all of that raised to the 0 0.3 power. Okay, So in order to define this equation within HMS, you have to enter something that looks like this. So I'm going to highlight that. should be able to copy and paste. There we go. And if you don't have this equation already in a state that you can copy and paste it, you should be able to def 
create the same equation by using the tools, oops, the tools available to you in this editor. So 2.2 times and then you can start using these functions on the right side to help you define what this equation looks like. Alright, so if I hit calculate now, I'm going to hit calculate. And then if I go to that table, now I have the time of concentration values based on that regression equation and then the subbasin characteristics. Okay? So that's the the option that you want to use whenever um, estimate time of concentration or other um, parameters based on characteristics. If you have raster data and you want to estimate your soil loss parameters, what you do first is you need to load raster data into the project as grids. And Tom's going to talk more about this in the shared data discussion here in just a minute. But if you look at my HMS project, I have grid data. I have this percolation rate grid right here. This is my constant loss rate. The, the, there are steps that you can follow. There's tutorials and guides already out there that walk you through. If you have a, a GIS data set, you can save it as a GeoTIFF, and then you can load it into a, a DSS file as, as, a, um, a raster, as raster information. So I've already loaded this into my project, and then I'm going to follow the same step as before. I'm going to go to the Parameters menu, choose loss, deficit, and constant. And I'm going to estimate my constant loss rate, so let's delete those values. Go to the calculator. Make sure that you choose the right field. I don't want to estimate initial deficit. I want to estimate my constant rate. I'm going to double click on my percolation rate grid and then hit calculate. And there we go. So there's the average grid sale value for my percolation rate grid already defined for me in this global editor right here. In the past, you would have to manually do that and then come to this editor and, and type these values, but now you can use these automated tools to help you estimate the constant loss rate. Um, the final thing I'll say before I go through some of the, the questions that you went through is these are just initial parameter estimates. This doesn't define your model yet. Right, so you're getting values into the model to help you run a simulation initially. The, the Really the big work for you after you define these parameters is to calibrate the model to some type of observations out there. So that's the hard part. This is really getting you through the easy part, to be honest. Okay, we got that. We walked through the material. Let's take a look at the questions that you had to go through go back up here. So if I go to here we go. Under the lecture there should be, have been six questions. Um, Given two sub-basins with similar area, one had an elongation ratio of 0.9, the other 0.4, which sub-basin would give you the greatest, would probably have a greater longest flow path length? All right, so what we learned is elongation ratio of one means it's a circle, perfect circle, and then the smaller the elongation ratio is, the skinnier and longer that longest flow path should be. Right, so based on that, a elongation ratio of 0.4 should have a longer flow path length. All right, the next one, which is typically steeper, a subbasin's 1085 flow path slope or a subbasin's longest flow path slope. This is the right answer. It's the longest flow path slope is typically steeper. All right. What is stream sinuosity a measure of? We just talked about this one. Stream sinuosity is a measure of how much a stream deviates from a straight line. So a straight, if, it, if the stream was a straight line, then the sinuosity would be a value of one. As it gets more sinuous or meanders more, then the sinuosity value goes up and up. Can you have a stream sinuosity less than one? Yeah, there we go, answer is no. 
Um, how are the expression calculators accessed in HMS? We just walked through this. You access the expression calculator from the global editors. All right, so you open up the global editor for any of the methods that you have in your basin model, and then that expression calculator button is at the bottom left side of the global editor. And then what two broad categories of data can be used via the expression calculator? We just talked about it, gridded data. You gotta load your gridded data into the project. So it could be your saturated hydraulic conductivity. It could be the maximum deficit. So if the watershed was at its driest conditions, how much water could be stored in the soil? So the deficit could be specified. And then the subbasin characteristics are required as well. Okay, so those are the six questions. Hopefully they make sense. And then where the error is, let's go there. You're going to have to use a newer version of HMS. I can't remember when this was added, but it wasn't there originally. And of course, um, modelers made that request. Please export all of the, the information that's created from the characteristics. Yeah. Okay, and then another question, and Matt, if you could play along or um, navigate for me. Another question that came in is defining the projection for the basin model. So can we just go to the GIS menu and it'll be coordinate system. So here we see the projection for the basin model. And I believe what we did in this case is we just used the projection that our terrain data yet used. You can, uh, let's take a look at this predefined option. Let's just open that. I believe there's some presets in here for what we use, standard hydrologic group, and then there's all of the UTM zones. We recommend using one of those two. Now, UTM zone is going to be more specific to the region, but uh, we we recommend using one of those two. You don't have to, but those are just recommended. And then the browse option, let's take a look at that. The browse option is where you could browse and specify something like a PRJ file to set your um, your projection. So that's that. Is there anything else to talk about? Okay, one person was talking about how, or asking about being able to ex launch the expression calculator. I don't know if we stated it explicitly, but you have to have what we call a spatial 2D basin model to get this option. If that calculator button at the bottom of this of, of the bottom of this global editor, if that happens to be grayed out, it's very likely you're using a, what we call a stick figure model. There's nothing spatial about it. So to use this tool, you have to have those spatial elements because everything about the calculator is is based on GIS. It's running GIS calculations in the background to do these expression calculations. Okay. Those were the ones I, I saw and wasn't able to answer directly in the chat. So if we haven't answered your question, uh, feel free to put it in the chat again or raise your hand and ask it. And if you asked a question via 